Today we are also extremely favored and blessed to have our Honorable Chancellor, Reverend Father Dr. J. E. Arul Raj in our program. So I would like to take this privilege to say a few words about our Honorable Chancellor. St. Joseph University Dimapur Nagaland was founded and established by our Honorable Chancellor, Reverend Dr. Father J. E. Arul Raj. Honorable Chancellor Reverend Father started his journey by fully trusting God the Father with humble beginning of the Society of Daughters of Mary Immaculate, DMI Sisters, and Missionaries of Mary Immaculate, MMI Fathers. He is a revolutionary educationist. He has founded three universities in the African continent, one in India, that is St. Joseph University in Nagaland, a medical college in Tanzania, a good number of engineering and technology colleges, arts, science, and management colleges, B. Ed. colleges, polytechnic colleges, and a good number of international residential schools in India and abroad. He is a great philanthropist, carrying out many social services to the society through DMI sisters and MMI fathers in India and abroad. Especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, the services extended to the needy people across the globe was extremely great and well appreciated. The Chambers of Commerce and Industry of India recognized his contributions and conferred him with two awards in 2015, namely the Excellence in the Field of Education Award while celebrating Indian eminence in Africa and the Entrepreneur of the Year Award. At this juncture, we, uh, we would like to thank our Honorable Chancellor, Reverend Father, for all his missionary and visionary zeal in establishing an esteemed university in the heritage land of Nagaland and to serve the people to a greater level. With that note, I would now like to give time to our Honorable Chancellor, Reverend Father, Dr. J. E. Arul Raj for his address. Good morning to all of you. Your Lordship, Most Reverend James Topil, Bishop of Kohima, Nagaland, the Pro-Chancellor of the University, Honorable Governors of the University, Reverend Sister Lalita, the Superior General of DMI, Reverend Father Albert, the Superior General of MMI, Sister Yana Selvum, the Managing Trustee of DFT, and DFT Core Committee members, respected Vice Chancellor Dr. Yana Dure, Honorable Guest of Honor Dr. Abhijit Mishra, Director ICAR, Central Institute for Research on Agriculture, Respected village heads of Ikshay village, Reverend sisters of DMI, fathers of MMI, registrar, controller of examination, my dear staff, beloved parents, and my dear students, and all protocols observed. I am very happy to meet you all postgraduate induction program, which is being held this morning. It's a memorable day. My dear friends, this St. Joseph University, as far as I am concerned, it is a miracle. My brother, Jesudas, who was a priest in Nagaland, that is Kohima Diocese, for nearly 35 years, when I was doing my SSLC, call me also to this diocese as a priest, but I refused. And I said, sorry, I am not coming. But somewhere or the other, after nearly 40 years, God brought me back to Nagaland through a great bishop, James Topil, to begin this St. Joseph University. 
definitely it's a great idea of his lordship. There's no doubt about it. He persuaded me and the DMA Foundation established this university. I really appreciate the talk of Dr. Abhishek Mishra very, very much. He said something very, very important at the end. Be some foolish. Remain also stupid. Why? Be a student to learn. Some people, you know, when they begin, they think they know everything. They understand everything. Except their own self, they say they understand everything else in the world. But a very good scientist like our chief guest today, he proved to be the true student, true scholar, and a true scientist. And I am very proud to have him amongst us. Please understand, India has been a great hub of education for a very, very long time. Nowhere else so many people graduate and take postgraduate degrees like in India, anywhere in the world. Please understand. And you are also going to be very proud after two years that you have a postgraduate degree. Very nice. Very good. But my primary vision towards this university is nothing but to bring employable education in Nagaland. Please understand, employable education in Nagaland. Hundreds of thousands of people get degrees, but so many people stand on the street with those degrees without getting employed. I say, our St. Joseph University must give education that is employable. That's employable. It is precisely because our education from primary level to higher levels has remained mostly theoretical rather than practical, employable, experimental, and useful. Because so many theories, so much of books we study. I know one of my very close relations who completed his uh, four years course in mechanical engineering. One day I went to his house. I saw there was a switch on the switchboard fixed upside down. I asked him, my dear fellow, don't you know how to fix up the switch? Just imagine somebody studying for four years does not know the minimum of fixing an electrical switch. That is our type of education. I do not want to blame anybody. It is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. While developed countries boast a lot about their research centers. I know sometimes back, few years back, oh, America has more than 800 higher level research centers, research institute, scientific institute, 800. After some time they said, China is having more than America now like that and so on. India had so many educational centers, but very, very few research-oriented great centers of inventions. I am talking about research at all levels. Sometimes even at doctorate levels, most of the theses highly remain theoretical and less practical. Less practical. The gap between the needs of the industry and the outcome of the university has been growing wider and wider. Even though the government is a great employer, 
I believe the largest and the greatest employment potential must come from the educated people. My vision for starting this university has always been threefold. Firstly, to provide employable education to all. It means a graduate or a postgraduate who goes out of this university must be employable more so through self-employability and entrepreneurship. Secondly, please understand our Nagaland state needs more science and technology. I wish one day some of the great soft company, software companies come and put up their huge centers over there and employ many of you who are there, who are educated in St. Joseph. Not that you go searching for jobs somewhere else in India or abroad. These companies come to Nagaland to establish their centers. This is my great wish. So science, technology, and trade streams must be given special trust. They must be given very, very special trust. Our students and our university must be sought after so that Nagaland may generate its own self-sustaining environment. Not really putting our hand and stretching it out for something else. For, from somebody else to receive, we must create a state that is sustaining itself, that could sustain itself. A yes, self-sustaining environment, employing every youth of the state, and also providing employability even to others, to the people of Northeast. And you can do it. Believe me, you can do it. I always say, even though I have a number of degrees, I always say I am an SSLC man. Why do I say that, you know? From home until today, I have been a student, I have been a learner, I have been trying to learn everything that is possible. My dear friends, thirdly, it is my vision that this university must bring forth scientists, entrepreneurs, artists, artisans, and every possible self-sustaining person who also could sustain others and mechanisms of development of Nagaland and Northeast. That is my goal. That's the vision of this university. That's why I used to ask very often our vice chancellor, sir, what is the practical side of your university? What's the practical side of your teaching? What are the ways in which you are creating employability among our students? My dear friends, I call you friends, not just to students alone. As postgraduate degree seekers, I wish that you gather a greater amount of knowledge beyond your major subjects. As our chief guest said, don't seek on to the major subjects and subjects alone. Go beyond, think outside the box. Let there be a very huge, big thinking. Take optional subjects and enhance your employability. For instance, if you are a commerce student or economic student, Take some credits in photography, some more credits in catering, hospitality departments, as your additional uh, interest. This is possible. Except for your major subjects, there are optionals where you can go outside the box to learn more and think more and become better. And you must really think in this line. If you are a science student, you could equip yourself with business management, trade, 
and other contemporary subjects that can really correlate with the science that you are studying. You see, Father, the, sir, the chief guest was telling us, an ordinary priest could do so much about genetics. He should have been saying mass and preaching the gospel. But has been, he has been doing scientific inventions on genetics. Why not? Do that, my dear friends. Do that. Your skills must speak beyond your certificates. That is my wish. Your skills must be, talk beyond your certificates. People should talk about you saying, oh, this fellow studied just this postgraduate degree. He studied commerce. Now he behaves like a scientist, does things like a scientist. He invents and discovers so many things. Like That's what they should talk about you. That's what I wish. That's what I expect. That you should become from this university. I wish that every one of you will move forward with the tremendous knowledge you gather in this university and begin employing others rather than seeking employment. Let me tell you, we had an electrician here. You're paying about 15, 16, 17,000 rupees. Very often I used to tell him, why don't you do some extra things like that man? So after some time, this small boy went and bought two small trucks, second-hand trucks for one lakh, two lakh of rupee, and made his own ice plant, and started creating ice creams. And wherever there's a festival, he goes along with his two trucks and ice cream. Every day he sells for 40,000 to 50,000 rupees today. He has become a great entrepreneur. Look at the way a small boy could think. A small electrician could think. I wish every one of you a very happy and God bless stay in this university campus, my dear friends. May God bless you in abundance that you may go out as happy entrepreneurs who could sustain yourself and then and open up opportunities for others from the knowledge that you receive in this university. Please understand. Please understand. These days I have been reading a number of books and all those things. In reality, there are certain signs and development coming in this world which you must really know. You should look into certain futuristic courses such as augmented reality, virtual reality, which is a emerging science and knowledge coming into the world, artificial intelligence. This university must create some courses like that. In reality, we are investing something like nearly a crore of rupee in this augmented reality and virtual reality, AR and VR, buying a huge software to the tune of nearly 45 lakhs of rupees and going to make it available to all university. Every one of you, please spend some time asking the permission from your own authorities to learn something about it because that is going to be the future also of the world. Artificial intelligence, internet of things, data science, rob robotics, and other emerging fields which are really very, 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 very important in your life in anything that you do. If you are a trader, you need it. If you are a teacher, you need it. If you are a businessman, you need it. If you are doing, if you are an agriculturist, you need it. Anything that you do, all these things can simply multiply your own ideas, of course, your own profits. Of course, your own profits. Within five to 10 years, please understand this world you live is going to change. Don't think I am prophesying. 
scientifically i am talking scientifically i am talking and i request our authorities in the university also to make these type of things available in the university so that everybody who goes out of our university from this year knows something about this and they multiply their talents through this latest futuristic developments scientific developments of the world so my dear friends be brave move forward break the records gather practical knowledge accept the challenges of the world and you also challenge the future the future is yours believe me the future is yours think differently think outside the box think of the big picture the big picture that is emerging in the world this university will be always with you please never end your studies with this post graduate degree continue to study do your doctorate get into new fields of thinking and make this nagaland great may god bless you thank you very much god bless you thank you reverend father for your words of exhortation for your vision and mission for our students future you are indeed a figure of inspiration may god continue to bless you and guide you even as you continue to work to achieve many more goals and missions thank you reverend father